Curry, Mr. Bejeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. I'm Art Bergeron, but this is not a Bergeron Brief Show. Uh, I'm actually doing an introduction to a seminar that I did uh, this past month at the Hudson Senior Center. And I'm doing it because through my inadvertence, the, the, the filming started after the show had started. So I just wanted to let you know, this is a presentation regarding uh, dealing with Alzheimer's. If, you've got, if you or your care partner um, has early stages of dementia and you're concerned about it, or has early stages of something and you're not sure what it is, you want to see this presentation. You're going to start off by hearing Tammy Pazaricki. Uh, Tammy, whose day job actually is that she runs a social day um, 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 center for folks uh, during the day who have early stage Alzheimer's right over in Marlboro. But she's also very active in the Metro West Alzheimer's Partnership. So many of my clients, so many of her clients are people who have, are dealing with Alzheimer's. So you should hear about the, what the Alzheimer's Association can do why you should be involved. The first thing she's going to be talking about is that if you have early stage Alzheimer's, you may really want to consider being involved in one of the many drug tests that the Alzheimer's Association sponsors. One of the things they do is they sponsor a lot of research and you can get involved through them. You should hear about the, the rest of what the Alzheimer's Association does. You're also going to hear from a wonderful woman uh, named Carol DiRienzo. Uh, she is a nurse. Her partner is a, uh, is a contractor. One of the things they do is help people uh, who have Alzheimer's or other disabilities look at their home because the goal of the exercise for all my clients is to stay at home. Look at their home and see what kinds of modifications they can make to make your house safe even if you have early stage dementia. Uh, at the end I talk quite a bit about how you could finance these things. I talk a little bit about reverse mortgages which I usually don't recommend but do in some of these cases. Uh, and also about a special reverse mortgage program financed by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts through which they will lend you money, probably interest-free, with no closing costs for the purpose of doing these kinds of, of uh, improvements. So watch the show. If you've got any questions, you should call these people. They're really good. Uh, if not, uh, it's the end of the year. Have a wonderful holiday, and we'll talk to you in 2015. Thank you. Alzheimer's and other dementia. They need healthy people. They need people in the earlier stages of a dementia disease process to enter into these trials so that we can find a cure, if not a good prevention of this disease process. And you can find more about Trial Match on their website. Metro West Alzheimer's Partnership, Arthur mentioned that. The partnership is actually one of many, and we are a group of professionals and caregivers who work on increasing awareness in the community, providing educational programs. We help with the advocacy of Alzheimer's disease research. So if you're interested at all, please give Anne a call. Her contact information is there. We meet once a month for the partnership. So this is what I do during the day. I'll, um, I provide social day care services to folks in the earlier to middle stages of a disease process of dementia. All those dementia disease processes I just talked to you about, I've seen all of them, okay? The number one thing for someone to do when they're diagnosed is to isolate, withdraw, and keep away from friends. It can be a very embarrassing disease process for folks to try to be social. We provide, at Pleasantries, we provide the setting and facilitation of activities to give them a purpose and to give them a reason to get up and get dressed for the day. So we facilitate successful socialized programming to help these folks cope and to give caregivers a break during the day. So it is located in a small residential home right on Fort Meadow Reservoir. Um, we are regulated through the Executive Office of Elder Affairs. It is very different from a medical model adult day health. 
very different. Um, so that's important to know when you're looking into your options. The structure and routine, very, very important to Alzheimer's and other dementia disease process. Structure and routine provide comfort, the sense of safety and security to someone who needs it. Um, we do a lot of things, cognitive exercises, physical exercises. We engage a lot with nature. We do a lot with art, intergenerational programs, pet therapy, positive, positive emotions. This can be a very negative disease, and it's a stigma to some. And because we have so much awareness out there now, we need to embrace it with hope and know that there are so many places and resources out there, like the Alzheimer's Association, like programs, and educate yourself on it. Statistics show that half of folks over 85 develop dementia, some form, sort of disease process causing dementia. Okay, one in eight over the age of 65. And I do have guests that come to me in their 60s. Okay, so this isn't just um, a disease that affects folks in their 80s and 90s. So this is my contact information. I've left information on the Alzheimer's Association and pleasantries up there. We will take questions at the end, and thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Jim. So for those of you who haven't stopped by, you ought to stop by. As I said, I've had, I've, had, I've referred to quite a few people there. Um, one of the things I've come to appreciate about Alzheimer's is, is I really believed, until over the last few years, that, that that set of symptoms that go with Alzheimer's, the cognitive loss, the kind of the kind of loss of memory, the kind of the, some of the, the physical things about some spatial things, and that, that those symptoms and all the emotional pieces were inevitable symptoms of dementia. So that the, the depression and the anxiety and the anger, all the things that you see so often in folks who have got dementia, that that was just all lumped together. I don't believe that anymore. I think really, and I think that's what the science is showing more and more, that the emotional pieces are really secondary symptoms. They are the result of the way the person who has dementia a, reacts to the fact they've got dementia, that is, they're really bummed out about it, you know, and they're very frustrated because they can't remember and they're used to that and that's kind of part of how they feel their persona is, you know, if you can't do this stuff after years, that's pretty irritating. And it's easy to try to blame somebody for that, including yourself. But the other piece is they're reacting to the way other people are reacting to them. All those people who are like, well, why can't you remember my name anymore? Don't you know I'm your wife? You know, all these questions. Well, if you don't remember, that's really hard to take, you know? So, I think Tammy said an interesting thing. The, the point of, of going to social day is for people to get up having a purpose in life. Well, you know, that's the reason why we all get up. We all get up because the point is that we think we have a purpose to live during that day. Otherwise, like, why do you get up, right? So it's really the same, and I think that's where a lot of this is about, is, is in trying to develop a society in which Frank and Mary can continue to be happy living at home and Mary can feel that she has a purpose in life, and Frank and Frank can you know not drop dead because he's trying to do everything for Mary by himself. You know? So this part is really important. Speaking of all that, Baypath Elder Services, the nonprofit that I've brought here before, which is the entity in this area, the funnel through which all federal and state money for elders comes, they are the next call you want to make after you've called the Alzheimer's Association. They are the so-called Aging Services Access Point, or ASAP, in this area. They're going to be in charge of, they're going to, they're, you want them to meet you. Frank wants them to meet him and to meet Mary, to get a sense of how Mary is doing and to figure out which programs Mary and Frank could now qualify for just by virtue of being old, right? Over That is over 65. That's pretty much a lot of us who are here, right? Um, uh, and specifically for Mary in order to help Mary out, in order to help Frank to help Mary out. So they, they are the ones that provide, they provide funding for in-home programs, they provide funding for support groups, they do education, they do medication management. There is an income eligible, at eligibility criterion at this level. If Mary um, has, has these kinds of early Alzheimer's symptoms and needs, 
She is eligible for some for home care, for a lifeline, for Meals on Wheels, for a bunch of things. There may be an income limitation in that, depending on Frank and Mary's income, they may have to pay a copay. There is no asset limitation, though. That is the most important thing. These early stage programs, there isn't, a, 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 unlike with Mass Health, there is no asset limitation, so that they could qualify for pretty much for all of these programs, even and this is just their contact information, which you have in your, which you have in the handout. Even if in this situation, if Frank and Mary own a house that's worth four hundred thousand dollars, you've seen some of these numbers before. And Frank has an IRA worth two hundred thousand, and Mary and they have joint savings of two hundred. They have eight hundred thousand dollars in assets. And Frank has income of twenty-two hundred and fifty dollars, fifteen hundred from Social Security, and seven fifty from a pension every month. And Mary's income is seven fifty a month, so their total income is three thousand dollars a month. They can qualify right now for all the programs that we just went through. These are programs that are funded through our state, right? These are your tax dollars at work, really, really and truly, really. They're actually willing to give you back some of that money that you send them, right? Because you, you deserve it. You've been sending it to them for a long time now, right? So you can they, you can qualify for these programs. So the next question, which is the question that I had mentioned early on, is if you're Frank and Mary, and you're looking ahead now, so what do you have to do to plan ahead? And one of the things you need to do is to make sure that that house that Frank and Mary have been living in for 30 years is the place that they can stay in for the next 10 or 20, even if Mary's cognitive abilities and therefore to some, at some point some of her physical abilities really deteriorate. Um, I met uh, Carol DiRienzo hmm, a couple of years ago, a long time ago. And at that point, whenever somebody said, you know, we, we want to do some things to adapt the house, I said, oh, you mean a ramp? And that was the limit to me of what adapting the house meant. Um, so through her, I found myself thinking totally differently about the house, right? So that's what Carol's, Carol's going to talk to you about. Carol?